As Intel launches its latest CPUs, major production facilities are gearing up to make huge numbers of Z890 chipset motherboards. KitGuru recently flew out to China where we met Ethan Yang, the vice president for MSI's Shenzhen manufacturing plant. He gave us a tour of his factory facility just as they were going through the process of building the first Z890 Tomahawk motherboards. Before Ethan took us down the production line, he first showed us his monitoring system which allows him and his management team to know exactly what's happening on each of the lines. As the plain PCBs arrive in the factory, the first station they hit is a solder paste printer. Ethan explained that this machine lets them mask the motherboard in a precise way so that later when the board goes through the solder path, they can control exactly what does and does not get connected. Here they are actually working on the reverse of the board. Ethan then explained that there are three types of components that need to go on each motherboard. First there are the very small service mount components, then there are the components where the pins actually go through to the other side, called pin through, where they are sorted on the reverse. And finally there are the larger components that are mounted by hand. The majority of components will be installed on each motherboard actually come into the factory on a roll of tape, allowing the robotic manufacturing system to pick up each component and position it correctly on the motherboard. It is then the role of the human operators to ensure they have enough tapes on standby and they swap them out in time to reduce the chance of a production line having to stop. Ethan told us that each component is photographed before it's positioned on the board so they know at every stage of the process that they have the right component on the right board positioned the right way. Along the production line there are a number of holding stations that can take a stack of motherboards and allow them to either queue up for the next stage of the process or, in this case, to cool off when they come out of the oven. Next we come to one of the automatic optical inspection machines, which can do a very detailed analysis of everything on the motherboard at this stage. This allows them to quickly and easily highlight any potential issues. Each of these machines performs autonomous inspection and there is a repair station nearby manned by a human just in case something needs adjusting. Ethan told us that it's his job to ensure no faulty boards ever make it off the production line. So far then, we've seen the production line working on the underside of the board and at this stage each Z890 board goes into a flipper device that turns the board upside down so that the rest of the mounting can continue. He explained that the first part of the production process is relatively straightforward and now things are going to get a lot more complicated. Before getting to the second stage of production though, there's another holding machine and another inspection sensor that does a deep dive onto the board to make sure everything's perfect before it continues down the line. As we go along to the next section of surface mounting machines, Ethan pointed out the second stage production line information screen showing which of the units are perfectly loaded and have plenty of spare components and which ones are getting to the point where they all need to be reloaded soon. As you can see, the line at the top is red because it doesn't have much spare inventory. Now that all of these surface mount components have been added to the board, it needs to go into a second oven. However, at this stage they actually need to add extra support to the board in the form of a carrier in order to prevent it warping through the second oven. Ethan told us each of these small adjustments to the production process add to the chance of overall soldering success and reduces the amount of boards that need to be repaired on the line or sent back to the beginning for remanufacture. After going through the second oven, each board is now inspected by a much more sophisticated unit that intelligently analyzes everything that's been done on the board so far and tells the management team that everything's okay. Having seen all of the surface mount parts of the process, we now get onto the machines that do insertion. With pin through hole insertion, each of the two wires at the end of the component actually goes through the board and the connection is made on the reverse. It is only once these push through objects are added that the board finally begins to look like the kind of thing you buy in the shop. The large pin through hole mounting operations, for example power connectors, are actually too complicated for the robotic system to do at the moment. The components you have just seen added to the board then will go through another heating process where the flux will activate at 120 degrees. At this point MSI engineers were very happy to open the lid of this particular heating unit so we could see the liquid flux flowing under the board. It only sticks to the places where the original template you observed being applied earlier will actually let it through. This is how components are linked together on the board, and although most of the line is quite noisy, this is the one area that also assails your nostrils. As you'd expect, there's another automated checking machine that will scan every part of the board looking for issues and defects that can either be fixed immediately or taken offline. Now the new ZA90 motherboard has had a chance to cool down, you'll see that it's been removed from the carrier that kept it in place during the last soldering process. 
The board also has extra stuff added. It's been heated up, cooled down and removed from the rack, any of which could cause an issue. So Ethan's process will test the board again, just to be sure everything's okay. We've now moved to the first of a series of physical and electrical tests that are automatically carried out on the board. We're still missing the CPU mounting mechanism, which you can see here being added manually by a human operator. And then it goes into a robotic machine, which will do up each screw to exactly the right pressure. Then we're onto automated function tests where specialized machines will tell the operators if the board has been successful in its assembly. Here we have a bank of human testers that move the board onto a very basic system which will run through a series of BIOS and electrical tests. Operators can normally test four boards at a time like this, but the fact that this test is relatively slow means that they can often have up to eight units being tested by a single operator all at once. Each line is flexible according to demand. If we take a step back and look to the side, you can understand the true scale of this operation. We've been focused on one production line, but as you can see, there are many, many running side by side. And now we've arrived at the final AI-based checking system, which ensures that everything that should be on the board is on the board, down to the very last screw. There's one last visual inspection by a human who then approves the board's packaging, and it's ready to be boxed for scale. They scan everything going into the box, which is weighed, bundled for shipping, and then finally weighed again. Now you know how the Tomahawk board are made. Who knows, maybe one of the key gurus read my board is in a couple of weeks, online or in store. <laughs>